I'm going to show you uh, some different progressions of the kettlebell press. Um, this can be done with dumbbells or uh, you know barbell, whatever. Uh, I'm going to show, I like I prefer kettlebells because they fight you, and when you're lifting a load in, in real life, generally that load doesn't just move when you push it. Uh, it's got you know. Off center, uh, off center, center of gravity, which makes you have to work harder, and the kettlebell really does a good job of replicating that. So, without further ado, let me show you. So, I like to start this movement on the ground with people because you know there's something there to stop your elbows, which can prevent any shoulder injuries when you're first learning how to do this. So, starting at the top, what I do is I spin, I rotate my hands quickly on the way down. I am here at the bottom, light touch of my elbows on the ground, I'm up, and I rotate late, rotate late at the top. And you'll find when you do this, that when you do that late rotation, it feels like your arms just kind of snap into the right spot. That's how it should feel. The hands want to rotate quickly on the way down, and they want to rotate slowly on the way up. They don't want to rotate until right about here. If you've done karate, that's how they teach you how to punch. Rotation or boxing. Rotation at the last second, so use your body the way it was meant to be used. Something you'll also notice is that when I'm coming down, this, these kettlebells are not coming straight out to the side. They're coming down in an arc. So a lot of people, they bench like this. Now, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. I will concede that point. You're doing less work this way, but this is a workout. Why would you want to do less work? And the joints operate in an arc. Joints are a circle. They work best in an arc rather than a straight line. And this keeps your shoulder blades in the right spot, the glenohumeral joint in the right spot, the clavicle in the right spot to stabilize the shoulder. If you find that you're getting a lot of shoulder pain when you're benching, try, try this movement here. Try rotating, try keeping the kettlebells, fists over elbows, pull your elbows down, and then back up. And now the center of, just like in the bench press, if you've watched that video, the center of these kettlebells should be right about in line with my xiphoid process. And then when I get to the top, the the center, the, the center of the kettlebell, the center of the weight of the kettlebell is centered over my shoulder. So I'm making an arc. Cannot emphasize that enough. So, same, just like in the, without it, without the bench, you're still rotating. Except I find I rotate a little bit more. Um, it's personal preference. It depends on how heavy the kettlebells are. I find my palms almost face me at the top, face my face, and then rotate at the top. <laughs> So they got that extra range of motion. And then, we'll keep the hang of this. <sighs> Try it, an exercise ball. Now this is very challenging and potentially dangerous, so be careful. And if you hurt yourself, you didn't, you didn't hear it from me. All right, so, back, on the, back on, the, on the ball, make sure we're extending our hips, and then hands and elbows low, and then up. Hands and elbows low, and then up. This thing's gonna challenge your stability just a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't challenge it very much, as long as you're good at this movement. Enjoy.